You might be thinking, Brandon, your last video said that you're reviewing less of these retro handhelds. And yes, I did say that, but I generally do like this one. And I think many of you will like it if you're on the market for a Android based retro handheld that's very, very powerful that can fit in your pocket and has a four by three display. However, I do think this is marketed and positioned poorly because of Retroid's new handheld that's coming out called the Retroid Pocket 5, which is bigger. It has slightly more RAM, more battery, and it just isn't as claustrophobic as this. To cut to the chase, and I'll do this in the full review, this can emulate up to GameCube games flawlessly. It does struggle with a handful of PS2 games, but because it only has a 3.7 inch display, I didn't find myself using GameCube and PS2 emulation much at all because it's just too small. And that's why I believe they've packed too much power into this. This is their Retro Pocket 2S, my favorite retro handheld of the year so far, and still is. It's only $89 and can emulate up to Dreamcast perfectly. Why would anyone pay an extra 110 bucks to get a little bit extra premium build quality, which I'll talk about, it's incredibly comfortable, but that's a huge bump to get GameCube emulation in your pocket. And there are many more benefits to buying this, which we'll get into in a minute, but I just think you should probably wait for the Retroid Pocket 5 and wait for everyone's comparisons because it's just positioned awkwardly. Let's talk about it. In terms of specs, the Retroid Pocket Mini features a 3.7 inch AMOLED touch display with a resolution of 1280 by 960 at 60 frames per second. It also features a Snapdragon 865 CPU, an Adreno 650 GPU, 6 gigabytes of RAM, Android 10, 4000 milliamps battery, analog L2 R2, Hall Effect joysticks, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, USB-C charging and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. For those new to Android Retro handhelds, you'll be glad to know that this device holds your hand the entire way in terms of setup with an incredibly easy to understand custom process that will get you set up and ready to game in just a few minutes and i say this over and over in all of my go retroid reviews it's a flawless experience for newcomers and i wish other retro handheld manufacturers did it as well as this with the press of a button you get your android emulators loaded straight out of the box ready to go and it even comes pre-installed with their retroid launcher which is incredibly fluid and looks very nintendo switch like the Pocket Mini has got a whole new look when you compare it to the Retroid Pocket 2S. It's much more modern, features a sleek glass panel along the front, just like a &Neo, which I believe they started this trend and it is a very good looking trend, I'll admit. And it also features some much needed ergonomics on the back panel. Although the front looks a little more generic, it certainly receives some much needed upgrades. For example, you will no longer see a screen bezel and it features an AMOLED touch display that looks beyond beautiful in all types of light because it has 500 nits of brightness, which is very, very bright. So if you're playing this in the park on a bus or a train station, you will be able to see everything. It's a, it's a beautiful display and a good choice by Go Retroid. And because of the high resolution too, you can actually upscale a lot of the old retro games to make them look extra crisp hey. The D-pad is pretty much the same with some different arrows on the face. It's a great D-pad, requires very little force and has some very obvious clicky responses. I am happy that they kept this D-pad because it's just, just great. There's literally no issues with it. Below that, there's the new and on-trend backlit halt joysticks. I've had Bad experiences with hall joysticks that feature the LED ring because they're usually a little bit cramped. Pretty much Ambernix, in all honesty, are always cramped. But these are actually different to the competitors. They feature much more space, they're more comfortable, they have bigger travel to them, and they sit deeper into the shell of the handheld, making it more portable too. So I'm glad Go Retro didn't follow the cheaper route. I did notice that there is no option to change the brightness on here, so it's either blinding you or off. And also there's no animations on here, which I know Ambernix have like a rainbow effect or they follow the direction of your joystick. That isn't possible on here. The action buttons are also different, stick higher out of the device, feature different typography, and are much more satisfying to press because they have deeper travel to them. This makes them feel much better in terms of day-to-day -day gameplay, but if you are playing this next to your partner in bed, they will get annoyed, and I know that by first-hand experience. And also, because these are, they, they basically sit quite tightly in the shell, 
I did notice scrape marks on all of my action buttons. This might be more obvious because my buttons are black, but it just goes to show that it might be a little too tight in there for these action buttons. And I, I'm hoping that this doesn't cause any longevity issues with these action buttons, but it is noticeable and I had to bring it up because this is a review. Around the face, you'll find four smaller buttons that are simply start, select, home, and back. On my black device, these are nicely hidden. The same goes for the front speaker grills, which are again, unfortunately located under my thumbs. There's no real issue here, but you do get a sense of the direction of audio is being obstructed by your tummy tums. And it's incredibly loud as well, like too loud. I found myself only pushing between like 30 and 40% on average, and 60% was just almost too loud. So. 100% you either have to be crazy or deaf to want to use this 100% volume. The analog shoulder buttons are fairly large, curved and stacked with decent travel to them, making them feel like they've been ripped from a PlayStation 5 controller. They're very high quality and incredibly comfortable for long gaming sessions too. Between them you'll find a very small on off button and your volume buttons with a large vent for airflow. One negative I have that makes this device feel a little less premium is the fact that you can see the obvious screws. These stick out like a sore thumb on my black device and I'm disappointed that they didn't use black screws or even cover them up with some rubber. I could use a sharpie to basically eliminate this issue but why the hell do I need to do that on a $200 device? just add some damn rubber into them. This may be my review unit, but you know, don't send it to me if it's not finished. So hide the screws, please. The device as a whole is pleasing on the eye. There's no denying it. And it's a major jump from the Retroid Pocket 2S and the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. It's not as premium as the a Neo Pocket Micro though. I have to mention it's a plastic shell. It has no fingerprint reader and so on. So if you do want premium, in terms of a 3.5 inch device, then I will go and say that a and &E Micro have just beaten them here in terms of build quality because of the metal shell, the glass panel and, and so on. They, they did it first and it does feel better in the hand. Although the ergonomics on this thing because of the back shell is phenomenal. This is one of the most comfortable pocketable handhelds I have used. Go Retroid have nailed it with this back panel. I don't, maybe, you know, because of the, the Retroid Pocket 2S was square and felt like SpongeBob's butt cheeks. And now upgrading to this, it just feels perfect in my hand. I've got some pretty large hands as well, some big old British beefy hands, and it's just designed perfectly. There's no stretching of the fingers. The back panel is flawless, and I just think Go Retro would have done a really good job here. For a 3.5 inch device, I found myself playing on this with for hours on end without any strain in my hand. It's well designed. The ergonomics, just great. They do call this the Pocket Mini. And you know, for me, the Mini is like the Game Kitty Pixel or the Funky S or even the Mayo Mini. This is not Mini. I have the 16 Pro Max. This is a big phone, massive. Almost like a, if you put like wheels on this, it would be a skateboard. This is the same size. You know, any bigger, and the same goes for my phone, any bigger, and this wouldn't be pocketable. And admittedly, they've kept the analog sticks hidden, which is quite nice, but because of the ergonomics, it will feel and look a little lumpy in your pocket, but it's just about pocketable, but certainly not mini. Now let's talk about emulation. This packs a Snapdragon 865 CPU, six gigabytes of RAM and a decent GPU into a device that can fit into your pocket. This still amazes me. I remember two, three years ago talking about how we really want N64 emulation in our pocket. Now we've got GameCube emulation in our pocket with a Snapdragon 865 CPU. This is mad. This industry is moving way too fast, but the benefits of that is now we have too much power in our pocket. Because it runs Android, it opens up not only emulation opportunities, but it gives you access to Android games, cloud streaming, and more, should you want to do that. For me, this is designed specifically for retro games. I didn't dive into cloud gaming. I didn't dive into Android games because they require usually a bigger screen. This is specifically for retro gaming. The specs on this device can handle GameCube games incredibly well and can easily state that it will play most of your GameCube library with ease at silky smooth frame rates. There is this odd drop now and then on larger games such as Simpsons Hit and Run, but it's still a fluid experience and anyone wanting GameCube emulation on a pocket device like this, this is the one to go for. It's, it's brilliant. There's very little issues at all.
The same goes for Dreamcast, it just crushes it. And on this display and ergonomics, I found myself playing these consoles for hours on end, draining the five hour battery life with ease on a recent holiday of mine. But the console I put most of my time into was actually PlayStation 1. I don't know why, I just gravitated towards this on this device. You're wondering, Brandon, you have a Snapdragon 865 CPU, why the hell are you emulating PlayStation 1 games, you fool? But it just felt good and looked good on a display and the ergonomics of this device. It's just what it is. And I did dabble in GameCube, it was great, but it does feel a little claustrophobic. And the same goes for PlayStation 2. This can emulate some PlayStation 2 games. Some. The ones that I wanted it to play, such as Need for Speed Most Wanted, no. It struggled. It, it had frame rate issues, had audio issues, stuttering, and so on. So for me to go, yes, this plays PS2 games, it needs to basically play all of them just like it can with GameCube games. So for those wanting PlayStation 2 emulation on this device, I wouldn't recommend buying it. And the screen again is just too small for like comfortable PS2 emulation. If I was a customer, I would be waiting for the Retroid Pocket 5 reviews to come out in the comparisons because for $20 extra, you are getting a lot with the Retroid Pocket 5, especially the bigger screen will just make PlayStation 2 games that little bit more comfortable. And I'm hoping the two gigabytes of extra RAM can push Need for Speed Most Wanted into good frame rates, but we just don't know yet. You know, that's why I think they've sneakily released this a month or two early. So they get the sales and then people go, actually, I want, I want the Retroid Pocket 5. It's got a bit more RAM, it's 20 bucks extra, bigger screen, probably better ergonomics, better battery. Whoops. Um, and I know Go Retroid have had a history of doing some dodgy tactics like that with the with the pro version of their Retroid Pocket 4. And I think this is them just trying to play it safe a little bit, but ruffle up some feathers. So I would say just wait. If you want NES, Game Boy Advance, Sega Dreamcast, Nintendo DS, uh, PlayStation 1, lovely. But PlayStation 2, GameCube, PSP, just a little cramped, even though it can kind of run them all well. The Retroid Pocket Mini has some much welcomed physical upgrades that push this and its price into the premium category of retro handhelds. And because it's packed with power, it can certainly handle most retro consoles that its customers will likely want to emulate. But that said, PS2 games are still out of reach for this device, capping its limit at GameCube emulation, which older and cheaper devices can still do, albeit not this comfortably. With that in mind, I wish they priced this lower at like $119 or $149, but lowered the specs and kept the beautiful physical upgrades that is much needed from the Retroid Pocket 2S. This is still a superb device because of its price tag and what it can do, but I wish Go Retroid basically put th these specs into this body and priced it $119. And I believe this would have sold much better in the long run because it would have provided a smaller device for those that are also buying the Retroid Pocket 5. They've just pimped it out too much and I get it. They see the market and just go, let's just make the most powerful 4x3, 3.7 inch uh, display retro handheld on the market. Cool, people will buy that, right? People will buy this. It's an absolutely lovely device, but I just think they would have had better luck pricing it at a more affordable rate with less specs so that entice people to go to the Retroid Pocket 5 additionally as well should they want the 5.5 inch display. And this is what it comes down to. It is a superb device. I love it, I will use it, but as a customer, I do think you're better off waiting for the Retroid Pocket 5 to see, your, see, to see the reviews and honest opinions in comparison to this because this is still on the market. This is why it's all priced a little bit awkwardly. This is still superb. This is priced $20 less than their flagship device that's coming out in a couple of months. Why? Why, why did they do that? This should be replacing this. I think. I think. 